Hello my friends, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to talk about the Racting 301. When you look at the design, well, it is a bit of a mix between a Placey Challenge and the next level racing foldable rigs. It also has the red uh, accents in it. So yeah, it really looks a bit like them. Is it a good design? Is it not a good design? Well, I know you guys uh, or certain guys uh, amongst you think it looks like a lawn chair. Well, yeah, for a foldable solution, yeah, it's like that. So for configuration, there is a lot to say. You have the pedal base, which can be slid further or closer, 30 centimeter approximately that you have here. Um, so this should be enough for most uh, most people out there for the leg length. Um, it can also be inclined slightly because it has two feet on it. The feet are more to like um, stabilize it with the floor. Uh, so they are there, but yeah, you have an inclination of about one centimeter. <clears throat> now this is uh, good for the pedals that are inclined already a bit on their own. If you really have um, pedals like the Camus uh, LC100 pedals that are in a 90 degree angle, I think the inclination here is not sufficient uh, for those pedals. The wheelbase holder can be tilted up and down, which is a bit normal with those rigs. Um, the only thing that you can't do, and this is similar with all the other rigs of the same type, um, in, in height there is no 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 adjustability possible there is also the ability to slide the tray back and forwards using the multiple pre-drilled fixation points it features a horizontal travel of 10 cm which is a more than generous amount the seating area of the 301 is equipped with straps which allows you to add some tension to the hammock this allows you to sit a bit higher or lower, but is also used to regulate the ergonomical fitting of the backrest to your back. The seating area is at the point of the knees 48 cm wide from outer tube to outer tube, which is very snug, but it featured no issues for me when driving. A big improvement here is the folding top of the backrest, which can be tilted back and forwards. This was first featured on the Next Level Racing FGT Lite and the lack of this feature was a thorn in the eye for the entire Placey Challenge lineup following the many remarks I received on the reviews I did of them. Well done, Racting. So the shifter holder is a bit different. Eh? You don't have any configuration here. You, you can of course put it uh, left or right for left hand drive, right hand drive, uh, but the inclination stays the same. So it is inclined already in a 45 degree angle. Now, um, when I first saw it, I thought it would be an issue, but once I, I uh, started working with it, I noticed that it is, yeah, it is just a matter of uh, of getting used to it, um, and and it works just fine like this too. For configuration, it is always difficult to find a good seating position, uh, especially in the, these types of seats. Um, now, I didn't have any issues with the uh, with the distance of the steering wheel towards the body, which is sometimes uh, already an issue. Pedals were okay as well. Um, the only thing that I noticed was that it came a bit high for me, the steering wheel it came a bit uh, high. Now, I did use a GTDD Pro um, Fanatec base with a 32 centimeter steering wheel. So it is really the large, largest steering wheel that, um, or one of the largest that you can have. So yeah, for me, it came just a bit too high. Um, now this this is uh, this will always be an issue. I mean, with these types of seat where you cannot adjust the height, yeah, you have to choose and you take the median. And if you take a normal steering wheel, let's say a Trustmaster a T300 with uh, a normal 28 centimeter steering wheel, then it will be just fine. It's just with the steering wheel and the base that I had for me, it came a bit too high compatibility for the wheelbase uh, holder is also very good. Uh, I tested it with the um, Fanatec, I tested it with the Moza, but it also supports a Simagic, it also supports Trustmaster, Logitech. Um, so yeah, it is really, it, 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 it offers compatibility for all the mainstream manufacturers of wheelbases out there. Pedals, the same thing. I mounted the uh, Fanatec CSL pedals on it, which is normally it is already a task with certain uh, certain brands, but I had no issues here. So I think they really uh, did their homework when it comes to the compatibility for the uh, wheelbase and the pedals. 
For build quality, there's nothing really out of the ordinary. If I have to make a few remarks, it would be that the suede uh, uh, fabric that they use for the seating area, well, there's a lot of wrinkles in it and aesthetically it is not that top, uh, but it is sturdy. It is padded also, which, which I really, uh, really uh, could appreciate. Um, something else would be the paint and yeah, that, that's a bit of a, of a downside. So it scratches also very easily. I have it now, uh, I, it was new when I had it. And yeah, there are quite a few scratches in it already from configuring it. Um, the paint, it feels very, very smooth, but yeah, scratches will appear on it when you configure it. The last thing that I want to mention for build quality would be the folding mechanism. So there is a special folding mechanism here. When we look at the um, the PlayStation Challenge X, it has like the uh, the hub and the same for the uh, um, the next level racing GT like they have the hubs to yeah to keep the the feet into position. Um, here it is different. And at first I really thought I would demolish it directly. Um, I saw a video of um, erecting uh, online about um, uh, with with somebody that just dropped in into the chair and it survived without any issues so i did the same thing but with my corpus which is a bit more um, uh, mass behind it uh, i was a bit afraid but i did it anyway a few times dropped in it and i was surprised that it still held it's a very sturdy mechanism uh, that they implemented it doesn't look like that but it is um, so that is a very very good is also very good for the uh, for the foldability very easy so that's something in build quality that i can really appreciate too Perhaps one point of criticism on the folding system, the little foot that comes in to stabilize the structure when you flip open the wheelbase holder, well, you need to take out completely the bolt, realign it and then close it up again. It works as is, but the mechanism itself is crude and could use some refinement. The red screws on the pedal base holder are made out of plastic and hold the pedals into place by just screwing it tight against the frame. There are no pre-drilled holes or bumps foreseen to give it a bit of extra grip. While I didn't notice that much of an issue while I drove, there are people that have had issues with the pedal base sliding away when braking hard. This could happen over time if the bolts wear out and lose some of the grip. A fix here would be to drill a hole or a few holes in the tube and replace the plastic bolts by metal ones. Again, I have to stress that I did not experience this issue personally not with the 301 or the PlayStation Challenge I reviewed before, which used the same principle. However, I was able to lift the entire frame though when braking hard. Now this is just a result of the design and also an issue with cheaper fixed tubular frames. In all, I would rate the pedal base certainly as adequate enough for normal usage with most mainstream pedal bases. The wheelbase holder is handicapped for stability by the opening and closing mechanism to get into the seat. Here, it is important to have the mass of the wheelbase well distributed on the wheelbase holder plate in order to improve the stability. But still, you will notice your wheelbase flexing back and forwards quite easily, especially when you have a mid-range direct drive attached to it. Now, as always, flex is something very subjective. Some people are allergic to it, others are so drawn into the immersion of the game that they don't mind it that much. For me personally, I find it to be distracting somewhat and I would mark this as a point of attention for the next iteration of the 301. So footprint is uh, one of my favorite topics for this seat. It doesn't take a lot of space. Uh, length 150 centimeter by 72 centimeter with the shifter holder on it. And then when it is folded in, you get it to 34 centimeters in, um, in length. Uh, 72 centimeters in width which is uh, the same and 120 centimeters in height this is with the material attached to it eh? so this is really um, i still need to compare it to the place challenge Act, but this is really really uh, one of the most if not the most efficient when it comes to space and folding features of course foldability it works like a dream so in, in a matter of seconds, you can raise and in a matter of seconds, you can fold it up and put it back in storage. This is something that is really important. And this is something that I really had issues with, with, for example, the next level racing GT Lite. This is why I dislike that chair so much because of the, uh, it takes so long to fold out and fold back in. 
Um, so very, very good feature here for the uh, 301. There is also a shifter holder included. There is cable attachment and not the boring black ones, but red ones, uh, the accent color red. Uh, is included with it. It also have, has the attachment for your material included. So you have the bolts for your wheelbase and your pedals, your shifter. It is all, all in it. Um, so this makes it a very complete package once again for the 301. Options, we can be very short. There are no specific options for this chair, uh, no display stands or whatever at this moment for uh, available for this chair. With a price of $201.95, it is about the same price as a PlaySeat uh, Challenge. Um, shipment costs will have to be included also, but they have warehouses in uh, the US, Canada, Japan, UK and Europe. So normally the shipping prices for this rig will also be very reasonable. I would say if you watch the best uh, sim rigs of 2024, the video that I made, um, I said that the PlayStation Challenge X was the best foldable system. I said the PlayStation Challenge Classic, the black one, um, is the best um, bang for buck one. Now, uh, we had some issues uh, with, uh, there's still a lot of innovation that can be done in this segment. With next level racing turning in circles and place it moving at a snail's pace when it comes to innovation for the foldable rigs, there are opportunities for brands like Recting to capture a piece of this large market with some improvements of the existing concepts. The fixation of the pedals is certainly a big plus, as is the folding mechanism of the legs and the tilting upper part of the backrest. Combine this with a complete package, a ridiculously easy deployment and configuration with on top of that efficient storage capabilities and you have a very worthy challenger for the standard in its class for the moment, the PlaySeat Challenge X. An in-depth versus video to see how the 301 really performs in a head-to-head -head against the X will follow soon. Thank you all for watching. I hope you had something from this video. Leave a like if you did, subscribe if you want to see more videos. If you want to buy this seat new, you can use an affiliate link and this voucher code to get a reduction on your order. I will see you all next video. Bye bye.